Hi everyone, it's Chase Chapel, and we are in week two, module two, ad set optimality. We will be going over some very, very important information today that is essential for getting low cost per results and giving us a bigger bucket to get results from. And we're going over the steps we must take for generating audiences that will last, especially audiences that will last way longer than interest-based targeting ever would meaning the audiences we create today are going to generate results for much longer and consistently over a longer period of time, unlike interest-based targeting, which almost always dies out first. So here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to start off with understanding the audience types that scale and self-optimize best, why casting a wider net in phase two is imperative to your success. Then we are going to cover the power of automatic placements and the death of edit placements, we will then go over the conversion window that is best for optimization. And this is where the initial structure of your campaigns and ad sets really set the path for success. So it's extremely important that you complete these action items today. You put in a lot of effort into these things and that you upload them and store them in the action item section within week two. And if you don't get these things right initially, then moving forward, your results will crumble and there won't be any longevity to the audiences or ads you create. And we want to have audience and ads that last long. So it's imperative that we stay focused and follow these steps today. Here's the four phase system. Um, the four phases are phase one is data intake. Then we have phase two testing. Phase three is optimization and phase four is scaling. And then we have to go through each of these phases before we move on to the next. Otherwise you can throw off the entire system and damage your results. Now to get a better understanding of this four phase system in greater detail, we're going to be covering phase two so now it's time to get started on phase two. So this is where we are right now. We are testing. I've explained this before, so I'll keep, keep it brief. You should have already completed phase one by setting up your tracking, turning on one-to-one -one matching on your pixel, chosen the campaign objective that you're going to optimize for, which is either leads or purchases. And now we are in phase two. We will be covering the ad set optimality structure today which includes the audience variations we're gonna create and the automatic placements, our open audience, which is the control audience and the conversion windows. Now I can't stress enough how important and how imperative it is that we make sure we stay in order and don't skip or make irrational decisions by moving ahead. This four phase system has worked for all of our clients and has worked every time um, for each student who has precisely followed this step by step. So in phase two, we're going to want to set up our control audience, but first we need to cover the audience types we want to create, then the placements we want to select and the conversion window we want to optimize for. So the initial audience we want to start with is the control. And the control audience is an open audience, meaning we don't select any interest, be behaviors, or anything like that. We leave age open, gender open, and we expand detail targeting. What this is going to do is allow the algorithm to basically have a huge audience to look at and it is going to be able to get results for you and it will automatically optimize on its own by targeting only people who are most likely to convert. This over the long term actually ends up being our students best performing audience. It's pretty crazy stuff. You don't restrict the ad set audience size and that ends up being the best one. Most people never knew never knew about this because they they haven't tested it and they think that you know they need to get specific with things and that's actually couldn't be any further from the truth then we have placements and we will select automatic placements and our conversion window we select the optimal conversion window of seven days click as that gives the algorithm the most amount of data to work with when finding people who most likely will convert so let's look at the audiences we want to start creating I've listed the initial audiences we will create. If you're optimizing for lead based, then the ones you will create, if you're optimizing for purchase based are on the right. Lead based on the left, purchase based on the right. So right now, go below this video and watch the lesson on how we create these audiences down below. Here's an example of the custom audiences, what that might look like after you created them if you're lead based. And then we have lookalike audiences that we will create. Once again, based on the left and purchase based on the right. To see how to create your 1% lookalike audiences, make sure you watch the lesson video below. It's important that we have these lookalikes and that we select the 30 day option because that is best for relevance and 1% is most likely to convert because it's the 1% of people who most closely resemble um, your custom audience. 
And this is an example of the lookalike audiences after you create them for lead base. So now at this point, you should have your lookalike audiences created and your custom audiences created. Now we are covering automatic placements and why this will be so important to use. Automatic placements enable us to get the best results available from across all placements because we can choose results from the widest range possible. Automatic placements are typically the most efficient use of your budget and help control cost. I strongly recommend using it. I recommend this because if you use the lowest cost bid strategy and you decide to check the average cost per result for each placement in your reports, you might notice Facebook feeds is significantly cheaper than it is on Instagram stories. So you might think, okay, well, I should probably stop placing ads on Instagram stories and place more of them on Facebook feeds, right? Wrong. I can see why you, you would consider that, but keep in mind that the algorithm is designed to only show your ads to people that will most likely convert at the lowest average cost overall, not the lowest average cost for each individual placement. What this means is the algorithm looks at all available opportunities across all placements and selects the least expensive ones without regard for the average cost per optimi optimization event it will be within that placement, meaning it doesn't care if it's gonna be a little bit higher on another placement, as long as it keeps your overall average down. So basically it's choosing the lowest cost result it can get out of all of the platforms. And if you're limiting your placements, you're more than likely screwing yourself by raising your own cost. And I'm gonna show you an actual example. So let's say that your daily spend is $25 on your ad set and you select automatic placements, what the algorithm is going to do is, what the algorithm is going to do is, it is going to first get a result, and the first result you get is on Facebook if you have automatic placements selected, and you pay $3 for that result, and then as time goes on, it gets another result on Instagram for you, and it paid $5 for this result, and then, it gets another one on Facebook, this time for $3, and then it gets one on Audience Network for a dollar, and then it goes and gets one on Facebook for $3, and another one for $5 on Instagram, and another one for $5 on Instagram. So what ends up happening is it got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven results. That's seven results and the cost per result it paid is $3.57. That is the average it paid, okay? So, oh. That is the average it paid. It paid $3.57 per result. And we know this because you spent a total of $25 and you got seven results. So each result costs $3.57, spending a total of $25 on automatic placements. And what ends up happening is over time, as time goes on, it's going to choose and optimize for whichever person is most likely to convert at the lowest cost, it is going to show your ad to them and get them to convert. So if the first one is Facebook, then if the first one's Facebook, then it's gonna get that one. And then if the second one's on Instagram for $5, it's gonna get that one. Well, you might ask, why doesn't it just get, you know, this one right here for $3? Well, it's it's time-based. So like maybe that person's not online yet that they can probably get that result for. So it goes to Instagram and gets you a low cost per result within that time. So as time goes on, it's, it's choosing to get the people who are most likely to convert at the lowest cost out of all of your placements, okay? So what ends up happening if you do edit placements? Let's say that, you know, $5, you look at your report and you're like, $5 cost per purchase for Instagram, I, I don't like that. So you decide to turn off Instagram and you turned it off and you still kept your daily spend at $25. Well, what ends up happening is the algorithm then starts going and getting results. It gets somebody on Facebook to purchase for $3 and then it gets another person on Facebook to purchase for $3. It gets a result on automatic placements for a dollar, and then it gets one up here for automatic placements for $10, and then it gets one for Facebook on $3. But because you had Instagram turned off, you didn't get any results there. So therefore you got one, two, three, four, five results. 
you got five results and your cost per result was five dollars. So you actually paid more money and got less results because you turned off Instagram. So even though you might think that you know your audience isn't on Instagram, it and that you know Instagram is five dollars, but you could be just using Facebook to get three dollars. That's actually not how it works. Um, just because you turn off a placement doesn't mean your um, costs are going to go down. Well, it's actually vice versa. If you turn off more placements, your costs actually go up. And the reason for that is because the algorithm chooses out of all of the available placements um, that you have available that you've selected. Um, it's going to go find the person within that precise amount of time to get the lowest cost per result on any of the platforms. So therefore, um, if you do edit placements, it's it's going to you know want to spend your twenty five dollar budget, and the only way it can do that is by you know we only have five people to get results from, so it's going to have to spend this ten bucks up here on this one result, which ends up costing you you know two other results you could have had and you could have paid a lot less. So you're actually almost paying $2 more per result and you know, you're getting two less results because of it. All just because of turning off Instagram. So it, it's very important because over the long term like this adds up like you know, your your cost per result's going to keep going up, your your results are going to keep going down if you limit yourself and you limit the algorithm, it's not going to be good. So it's very important that we choose automatic placements. So automatic placements enable us to get the best results available from all across placements because we can choose results from the widest range possible. Automatic placements are typically the most efficient use of your budget and help control cost and I strongly recommend using them. Now we're going to talk about the conversion window. Conversion windows tell the algorithm to look at the conversion data to decide who to show your ads to, and it learns what types of people convert within that window, then finds more people like them. The conversion window we want to select is seven days clicked. We select seven days click because this gives the algorithm seven days worth of data to look at when deciding who to show your ad to. This is an example of what your conversion window should look like. You should have selected seven days click and lowest cost per result bid strategy. And the reason we do this is because if you were to choose another conversion window like one day view, that means the algorithm only gets one day's worth of data from people who only viewed your ad. That doesn't even include them clicking on it, purchasing or anything. That's only people who viewed. So if your algorithm, your pixel is optimizing based off of data it only gets from one day from people who viewed it didn't even take an action you're gonna end up spiking your costs you're not gonna have any data for your pixel to work with and it's just not efficient so we want to choose seven days because um you know if you're selling a high ticket product or you're just selling a product that you know people might want to think about it you have up to seven days for that to be attributed to your ad so if like somebody sees your ad on day one and they click on it and they're wanting to purchase but you know they want to wait until Friday um, like five days from Monday and they decide to then purchase on Friday it still gets attributed to your ad because that's originally where they came from and the pixel still gets to use that data because it's been tracking it for seven days so it's gonna follow that person for seven days to see if they end up purchasing or becoming a lead and if they do your audience is this will get cycled into your audiences and it will automatically start improving your audiences. So we wanna do seven days click because that gives your algorithm way more data and this is gonna allow your, um, the longevity to really take place. So here's what we covered. Let's do a quick recap of everything that we covered on this video lesson today. We got clear on understanding the initial audience types we are going to test. You should now go below and watch the lesson on setting up your control audience and then how we are going to launch the other lookalike audiences into testing as well. So make sure you watch those videos below because they are very important. And then we covered the benefits of casting a wider net with your audience placements. Then we covered the power of automatic placements and the death of edit placements. And then to find the conversion window that we want to have the algorithm optimized for, which is seven days click. So now you should be on your way with having audiences that perform better. And on the next video, we are going to cover the types of ads we want to test initially so that way we can get this system in place which gives us a huge range of opportunity and this will allow the results to come in over a longer period of time consistently. 
So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one right now.